In this video, we're going to cover creating a startup macro. We're going to look at some sketcher tips. We're going to cover the groove tool, the helix tool. I'm going to look a little bit at the model tree. And we're going to talk about the topological naming issue. Uh, I did download the latest version of FreeCAD. So mine is version 0.19. They actually call it on the site 0.2. And then the revision number is 24291, and it was released in April 15th of 2021. So if you're having any differences with your free CAD, it may be because you have a different version to me. So some things do change in the versions. In this video, I'm going to break up each of these uh, topics. So if you're not interested in creating a macro, skip this section. And go on to the sketcher tips or the groove tool or the helix tool or the model tree or the topological naming issue um, i'm going to do it that way so it's easy if you're not a macro fan you can still follow along now what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this guy here and we'll start a new, a new drawing so the first thing we're going to look at is the macros and I want to show you my startup macro. So if I go into macros and I'm going to show you startup macro two because I already messed with it a little bit. So if you look here, this is my startup macro and what it does is it starts a new document that's called unnamed and then it creates a part. You can see it create a part here. Then it creates a body, um, does a couple of recomputes along the way, so that all that does is like a refresh, make sure everything's computed properly. And then it just does a save, and it saves the part so that you can give it a name. And then finally, it'll start a new sketch and let you choose uh, what plane you want to do the sketch in. So it's a very straightforward macro. Uh, we'll run it right now just to show you what it does. So I'm going to go macro. And I'm going to say macros, go down to startup two and click execute. So there it is, it started and it created this unnamed and a part. And inside that part, it's created a body. And I'm going to save this as A1, save, say yes. Then it brings me to the sketch. Now the macro is finished, it's not running anymore. And now I can pick the plane that I want to go to and start my sketch. I'm just going to cancel that. There's the body, there's the part, and it would have a sketch there if I had saved it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that, discard that, and I'm going to close my macro editor. So this is uh, exactly as you would be if you've opened up FreeCAD. I'm on the part design workbench, just so you know. And then to record a macro is this big red thing here where it says open a dialog to record a macro or you can go up to here and say macro and macro recording so you can do either one of those two and it will start so first thing I'm going to do is I am going to start a macro and I'm going to call it start up I'm calling mine five because I already have a one two three and four <laughs> so I'm going to do five I'll say record. Now if you see up here, we have the stop button. And what we're going to do is anything that I do now where I press buttons is going to be recorded. So I'm going to create a new file, which comes in as unnamed. I'm going to create a new part. I'm going to create a new body. And I'm going to save this file, save. When I do, I'm going to save it as A1. You can save it whatever you want to save it as. And then I'm going to start the sketch. And here's where it lets me select. And I'm going to stop the macro at this point because that's as far as I want it to go. I don't want it to pick the plane for me. So I'm stopping that. Again, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to close this A1. Discard everything. And now we're going to go look at the, the macro that we created. So. When it creates a macro, you can go into this macros and the user macros, come down here, start macro five, and I'm gonna say edit. 
So this is the macro. Don't be put off by all of the additional um, green text because all of that is um, commented out. So we don't need any of it. I'm going to delete that part. And I'm going to delete all of this down to where it creates the part. And then I'm going to delete all of this down to where it does a recompute. So I'm keeping the stuff that's in black there. And then I'm going to delete all this to where it creates a body. And then I'm going to delete all of this. That line there. I'm going to delete all of that. So now we have the active body. It does a recompute. And just here, I am going to delete these lines but not the one that says GUI send message to active view save. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this line that says save as and then puts the CAD file name in there. I'm going to delete that line. And I'm going to uncomment this line that says, if I can click on it, I'm going to uncomment this line that says GUI send message to active view save. To uncomment it, you just delete the hash tag in front of it. So I'm just going to delete that and leave that. And then I'm going to delete all these lines. I'm going to delete that line. Delete that line. And then I'm going to delete this bottom part. Now, of course, you can add dimensions in or uh, comments in there if you want to. I'm not going to. So these are the lines that we need for that. The only thing I changed was this GUI send message. It was commented out. I uncommented it, and then I deleted the line that I actually saved it as a name. So now I'm going to save this. So just go File, Save. I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to run that macro. So I'm going to run... Um, I'm just going to macros, start up macro 5, execute, and it asks me for a name, so I give it the name, save, and now it stopped running, and I can pick my XY plane, say OK, close my sketch, and there you see I have my, my uh, file of A1 is the name I picked, part, body, and a sketch. So that's really all you need for a startup macro. You can obviously, if there are other things that you do when you start a file, you can include them in that macro. I recommend you play around with it and see if you can't uh, come up with something that you like. Okay, for those of you that didn't follow the macro part, I'll show you how to manually create this like we always do. So we just hit this guy part, yeah, body, yeah, sketch, okay, sketch on the XY plane, and we are going to uh, look at some sketcher tips here. So one of the things I've noticed is if we draw um, some lines, first thing to notice is when I draw a line, watch my cursor, when I come up here to almost horizontal, you see that constraint pops on. You see that little horizontal line popping on and off. That means if I go there, it's going to create that with a horizontal constraint. If I don't want the horizontal constraint, I need to be not horizontal. So it's going to automatically try and constrain it to horizontal. So for this line, I want it horizontal. So I'm going to pop that in. And then the next line, I'm going to connect to that point. And same happens here for vertical. So if I go this way, as soon as I get close enough, it's going to say vertical. Another thing that you may have seen is when I come to this axis, it's also going to do um, this constraint up here, which is fixed to a point. So if I do that and that fixed to a point is on there, it's going to attach the line to this um, Y, or sorry, this, this X um, plane. So what's going to happen is it'll fix it to the X of the 
LCS. I will fix it to that line. I don't want to do that in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it not vertical. And then my next line, I'm going to connect. I'm going to come over here. Again, I'm watching this cursor. Now it's horizontal. And I'm going to connect this one here. I'm going to leave that one there. And I'm going to close my sketch. Now, my sketch disappeared from this model tree. So when the arrow is pointing this way, it means it's this part of the tree is closed. So if you click that down, that arrow will pop down, and then you can see your sketch. So I selected that sketch, and I'm going to pad it. And you can see it disappeared. I say OK. I have a failed to validate broken face error. So let's look at that. So how do we fix the fail to validate broken face error? Well, those of you that were paying attention will have seen that I didn't join this point to this point. So I'm going to go back into my sketch to edit it. I can double click on it or I can right click and say edit sketch. I'm going to double click and then I'm going to move this point onto that point. And then I'm going to close my sketch and I'm going to do the same thing again, pad. And now it works. However, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go back in my sketch. That works, but that line is not correct. So what's happening is this, the modeler is trying to approximate and is seeing that's closed even when it's not closed. So if you actually want to close that line properly, the way to do it is to select this point and this point and then this constraint, which is create a coincident constraint. So I'm going to click that. And now those two points are coincident, so they won't come apart. And if you want to check the other points, you can just move these lines around. If they're separate, what's going to happen is the lines will come apart at that point. So these are all joined nicely together. And now if I want to constrain this sketch, there are a couple of things I need to do. So I, I need to give it some dimensions that lock it down, but I also need to lock it in space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the sketch up here. And if we look at this quadrant or each of these quadrants, this is the top right quadrant, the bottom right quadrant, bottom left quadrant, top left quadrant. If you're in this top right quadrant, everything is positive. So from here to here is a positive number. From here to here is a positive number. So anything to the right of the green line is going to be positive. Anything to the left of the green line is going to be negative. The same with the red lines. Anything above the red line is positive. Anything below is negative. Why do I care? Well, I care because if I click this and I click my dimension. So all I've done is click one point and I click my dimension. It will dimension back to the origin and it will dimension in a positive way. If I click this point, just okay that, click this point and dimension, you'll see they go negative. The numbers are actually negative. I don't like that. It's not that it's wrong, but it's, I just don't like it. So I'm not going to do that. So I will do the same for this in a vertical direction. So now I have that point on my sketch is locked in relation to this point. So in space, this guy is locked down. Now this end is not locked down because we haven't given it a dimension, but this point here is locked down. Now, if you're creating a part and the way I do it is if I'm creating a part, I could dimension everything from this point up, out, up, and around. But that's not really the dimensions that I care about. I care about what I'm modeling. So I care about the, the dimensions from this datum point to the top, this datum point out this way, and from this to here. So I'm looking for how do I model, how do I... So to constrain this, we want to set up the dimensions, how we want the model um, to look. It sounds obvious, but it's it, rather than dimensioning from this point, we're going to dimension from here and create everything that way. 
Now, first thing I want to do is I always try to constrain geometry. And so I want that to be vertical. So I can click on that line, hit the vertical, and it becomes constrained. So now this point can't move left or right. It can go up or down, but it can't move left or right. One thing to, to know is if you've constrained something or if it's automatically constrained and you don't want that constraint to be there, you can just click on it. When it's gone green like that, you can just delete it. And now that constraint is gone again. Now if I want to put it back in, select that line and click that, there's the constraint back. Now if you go on this constraint list, I can see that constraint there. It's the last one in the list because the last one I added. I can right click on that constraint and I can deactivate it. So the constraint is still there, but now I can move this line around. And then I can click on it from here and I can say activate and it puts it back on active. And now that's constrained again. So to, to stop this point from moving up and down, I need to give this a dimension. So that's what we're gonna do next. And I'm not worrying about the actual dimensions. I'm just constraining my shape. So now we have that. That point cannot move up or down, left or right. But this point can. And this point can. So to lock that down, we need to have a dimension here. And now this point can't move up or down or left or right. The reason it can't move up or down is because it's horizontal with this point. So it's stuck there. Now to get this one to lock in, what we need to do is we need to either dimension this angle or this length. And I'm going to choose to dimension this length. And now it's locked. And now if I wanted to know this angle, I could measure it. Or I could try to constrain it. If I do that from here to here, you'll see it causes some errors. It actually tells me what it is, so it's 34.95, but I can't leave that dimension there because it's over constraint. So constraint. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel that. And I'm gonna show you how you can show a dimension without causing an over constraint situation. So if you go up here where these two squares are, you got a red square and a blue square. If I hit that, it switches all these to blue. When they're blue, they're reference dimensions, not constraining dimensions. So now if I click that guy and click here to here, I can have the dimension and it will stay there as a blue reference dimension, not a constraining dimension. Now remember my dimensions are black because I changed the color of them. Yours may appear red because that's how a normal constraining dimension looks. But I changed mine because some people are having difficulty seeing the red dimensions. So I changed mine so that they're black so they stand out a little better so that people can see them um, and make them out. So yours may be red. So don't worry about that if yours are red. Now once I have this shape constrained like this, uh, there's nothing I need to do um, beyond that. I'm fully constrained so that I can go ahead and I can model with it. Now these, these dimensions here are all coming from this datum point. So everything I have here is from this datum point and this datum point is coming from my um, coordinate system and it's dimensioned solidly from the, the coordinate system. So that's a good way I recommend to create a sketch like that. Now if I close this and I create a pad, we should see that it pads without any problems. I'm just gonna make my pad a little bit thicker for the next thing I wanna show you. And we'll say, okay, bring it to the middle. Remember this button here brings my view to the middle and then I can zoom in and out with my mouse wheel. Remember, I'm on the Blender um, mouse situation. So if you look at the Blender navigation style, select is left, zoom is the uh, mouse wheel, rotate is hold down the mouse wheel, 
and pan is you hold down the shift and the mouse wheel and uh, you can also do a pan with two buttons like that so if you if you're not sure which one you've got on here you can just hover over the the set in there and you can set it how you want it i like it in the blender navigation because i use blender as well and it makes life easy i don't have to think about what the buttons are going to do okay so for the next part of this i want to um, do something with the groove tool and so the groove tool is here we uh, zoom in there so you can see the groove tool so this is the groove tool it's analogous to the revolve tool so the revolve tool creates a solid part the groove tool is going to cut out that part from my solid so obviously you can't just create a groove on its own because that would create nothing so you're going to have a model once you got a model and you want to cut a piece out of it all of these red ones are cutting pieces out so the groove tool is basically a revolve but a cutting revolve so i'm going to go back out there and let's do a sketch and i'm going to do that sketch in the x z plane and remember if your part switches off you can go back to the model tree click on your part hit the space bar and your part will come back on i'll go back to my sketch uh, view and i'm going to use this toggle of the sectional view and i'm just going to draw just a piece that's going to revolve and cut a piece out of that now i'm not going to constrain this because i'm just showing you how the revolve tool works normally you would constrain everything and have it nicely constrained as a uh, groove as a revolve or a negative revolve or groove whatever you want to call it so i'm going to close that and i'm going to create my groove and you can immediately see my groove cut around in this direction so I want to change the axis because I want it to go around in this direction. So I can change it this way. And now if you look, it's on the horizontal axis. You can choose any axis here and don't be afraid to, to try them to see what comes out to make sure it's what you wanted. You can also change the angle, how much it, it goes around. I'm going to use just 360 because I don't mind on this one. And if you look at this, this is a great thing for creating um, something if you wanted to have a cable tie and a tie wrap that goes through this hole and ties something to the outside shape here that would be a great tool to make that slot and that slot is quite um it is quite uh technical in terms of how it creates it because it's, it's going on a a rotational plane so it's actually coming right around and then and then cutting the um, slot in there through that rotation so that is a great tool for creating slots like that um, that I use the cable tie things quite a bit and I use that to create those cable tie holes so that's why I mentioned that so I'm going to leave that um, hole in there and then we're going to do a little bit with the spiral sweep so the spiral sweep is this guy so again i need a sketch i'm going to do it in this plane which is my yz plane and again it's turned off so i want to turn it back on because i want to make sure we've got an overlap remember if you don't have an overlap and you create a part you'll have two bodies in one model and it won't work it just plain won't work so <laughs> you got to make sure that you have some overlap somewhere so i'm going to create this with just a square here and again i'm not going to constrain it if you were doing it you would be constraining it um, but i'm not going to constrain it just for the speed of the of the video so now you can see i have my sketch and i want to create uh, a spiral so i just click on that spiral and by default the but the spiral has um, the same width all the way along and it will spiral up and 
it will go out pitch height. So it's going to go, the height is from here to here. So my height is 71 millimeters. And then my pitch is 23.8. So obviously, if you imagine it's a spring, so you imagine if you make the pitch smaller, it's going to come closer together. If you make the pitch bigger, it's going to get wider apart. Um, and you can also set a cone angle. If you do that, what happens is the cone will angle out from where it started. It'll angle out over that 15 degrees in this case. And so now the bottom part is actually bigger than the top part. Um, that's good if you, if you want to create a helix that isn't the same dimensions all the way down. I'm going to go back to zero. So you can see the difference there. They're all in line now. And it looks much more like a spring. Now, if you want it on a different axis, the same thing as we did with our um, groove tool is you can just change the axis here. So if I change it to the horizontal axis, you can see it's sticking out the other way. And then I can change it to the base Z axis, the base Y axis, and finally the base X axis. Now the base X axis is the way I actually wanted it to go. And if you look at that now, I have a pitch and a height and I can change it to have um, a height and a number of turns. So that's got three, I wanna have five turns. So now you can see my, my spring or my helix is much closer together. And you can see where it intersects here. So, so again, you have a lot of flexibility over how you create this. And if I move, so if I go to my sketch and I move that sketch over, of course this part is gonna move over too. So if I cancel that, open my sketch, move my sketch, to say overlap a bit more, Close that, create a spiral with that sketch again. Remember it defaults to this way, so it's not gonna go back because I, I canceled, I didn't, um, I didn't close it. So I'm gonna go my height and a number of turns, and go to five turns. And now you can see it's intersecting a lot more. And the reason it's flat like that is because that's the same plane in which that square exists. So if I if I didn't want it to be flat, obviously it would be, if I did it in the horizontal axis, it's not flat because I'm not in that plane, but I'm doing it in this plane on purpose. So I, I want it to look like this. And I can create, I'm gonna make that more. There we go. So I have seven turns over a height. Now, if you're adding it together, what's gonna to happen is those seven turns are gonna be added um, to that guy. But of course, we can do a subtractive spiral. So this sweep along a helix um, will cut the body. So now if I do that, where you see the red helix, that red is showing you what's gonna be removed or subtracted. So it's only where the two parts intersect is it gonna be subtracted. So I did it now, wouldn't cut much out of it. If I do it from here, you can see it's cutting out quite a bit more. So if I say okay to that one, now you can see it cut out where that, that helix was sitting. And equally, if I go back in, double click to edit, and I say, do that on the X axis, and I say do our pitch, oh sorry, our height and our turns, and I do that with the seven turns that we had before. Say okay. And now it's cut out those slices in a helix, which would be good if you were wrapping a string around there. If you imagine you're wrapping a string around it and you wanted it to, to hold on to there, that you could certainly do something like that. Or I can open it back up and I can do it on my Y axis. And now I have a bit more cutting out. Say okay. And there you have it.
So now it's cut through. You can see it cut through, left a piece there, but it cut through nicely on the helix. And you can create some amazing modeled shapes uh, using this technique. So if I show you back here, let's pull that over there so you can see it. Now you can see where it's, it's actually cut that piece out. And so um, I'm just going to refine that. It looks like it's a bit dark, like it didn't cut it out right. Let me just see if that's coincident there, maybe. Yeah, let's just give that move. Let's go. I know what we'll do is we will go into our sketch and we'll change its attachment. We'll change its position. I'll just offset it a little bit and then we, get, we can go back into our um, subtractive helix and now if you look you can see the shape that it's created which is technically quite a difficult shape to create and amazing that we can do that with the free CAD modeler so just a couple of techniques to show you just for things that you can you can do these are things that go beyond uh, what we've already done of course you put everything together if you put everything together you can make some very complex shapes and again if we were doing it we would we would probably be a little more exacting than I've been here I just wanted to show you how they work so now I want to move on to the model tree a couple of things to know about the model tree so we can see it now we can see our model with the subtractive helix but it still exists with the groove. So if I click on that groove and I press the space bar, it will revert back to just the groove before we ever did the helix. And if I click on the pad and press the space bar, now it's reverted back to the pad. If I want to show that subtract subtractive helix again, I just click space bar again. So I click on the subtractive helix, hit the space bar, it all switches back on. So you have in this, um, model you have this whole model tree and all of this um, history with it and also underneath for instance underneath the pad is the sketch that we created the pad with if i want to see that sketch i can just hit a space bar it happens to be around that side but you can see there's the sketch that we created it with i can space bar that off and with the groove i can click on the sketch and there's the sketch that we created the groove from so if we wanted to, if we wanted to get rid of um, the subtractive helix, for instance, so if I go to that one, I'm going to turn off that sketch for a minute. So if I wanted to get rid of that subtractive helix, I can literally click on it and just delete it. When I do that, it leaves the sketch behind. If I want to get rid of the sketch too, so there's the sketch. If I want to get rid of that sketch too, I just delete it. So now I have no sketch, no subtractive helix. And I'm back to my groove. And if I want to get rid of my groove, I can either just look at my pad and my groove still exists, but it's you can't see it at the moment. Or I can go in and I can delete my groove. So I can just say delete that. And now that's gone. And then the sketch exists. Now, if you delete the groove and then you go, oop, I didn't want to do that. You can literally undo up here. Or I can click on control z and i'll bring it back again and when it comes back and it has these um, check marks on it that just means you need to do a um, one of these guys a recompute if you remember in the macros they do a recompute in there so that's how you do that so from the point of view of uh, the model flexibility you have a lot of flexibility in this very very easy to traverse up and down the model tree and I recommend you try it and get very familiar with it because it's very important to how you do um, free CAD uh, modeling. Now, one more thing I wanted to uh, show you, and that is I'm going to show you um, how, how the topological naming issue uh, affects you. So if we look down here, 
and I'll zoom in so you can see it. If we look down here, it shows what we're pre-selecting. So it shows the face that I'm selecting is face two. Now I'm going to come back out here, point to this face, and see if I can select that face. And come down here, and that's and it's a groove edge. Let me just zoom back out so I can see what I'm doing. Let's come back in here. And now I can see if I'm hovering over this face, I can see it's face eight. So this is face eight. Now I want to show you what happens if I draw, I click on here and draw a sketch on that face. And I'm going to, again, click on my part so it comes back alive. And I'm going to just draw a circle. And I'm going to close that sketch. And then I'm going to make a pocket. Now, one thing somebody asked me about this, there is a create a hole with the selected sketch. When you do that, it creates it in the sketch plane, but it will ask you to create the whole size and all that good stuff. So I always use uh, the pockets, so just create a pocket and that can be a hole of any size. I'll make it a little bit deeper so you can see it all. And my hole is in there and it all worked perfectly well. So you're wondering why wouldn't I always do that? On this face so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my pad sketch remember we can go into our model tree where these things have an arrow that's pointing right that means the, the tree has collapsed there so you can click that and open up the tree double click this sketch or I can right click it and hit edit sketch or I can double click it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, with this tool, I'm just going to create a line down here, get that vertical, that horizontal, get that one vertical, and then I'm going to take my trim tool, I'm just going to trim that piece out in the middle, and I'm going to close that, and now my part has a slot in it from that drawing, but where's my hole? Where did the hole go? Remember we created a hole on that face. So if I look, here is the hole. It is now in the wrong place. If I look at this face that I'm highlighting, if you look at the bottom there, you can see that the face is face eight. So what happened to this face? This face is now face seven. So the hole that is attached to face eight is still working as you would expect if face eight stayed where it was, but face eight has moved. So the topological naming is about the face name. So the face name is eight and the hole thinks it's attached to face eight and face eight is indeed that bottom face. So that is exactly what's going on with the topological naming uh, issue is if you draw anything attached to a face, then you modify that base model, create new faces into that model, you are now going to move the sketch that was attached to the face. So that is why we don't want to model from a face, not at the moment. Hopefully in um, version 0.2, that topolo topological naming issue is going to be fixed. However, as it's not fixed yet, your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to create a hole in this face without using the face as the sketch plane. And it should be um, 90 degrees to that sketch, to that face plane. And then modify this model again and still have that that hole be in the same place in the in the place that you intended it to be so as a clue you're probably going to need to use a datum plane or some kind of datum to to create that or you're going to need to put a sketch on an existing plane and then offset it so it's entirely up to you how you get there but give it a try so once you got that done if you if you've achieved it Leave me a comment below and just let me know how you did it and how it worked with the topological name and when you changed the model uh, that it still stayed where it should. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please uh, give it a like. That's really important because other people won't see it. If you don't like it, <laughs> if you forget to like it, other people don't get recommended to watch it. So that's why the likes are important. And also, if you're not subscribed already, it'd be great if you would subscribe. We're going to keep the videos pumping out. There's a new one coming out on Saturday. Uh, this one has already been with my um, patrons for a week. And the one that's coming out on, on this Saturday, or the one that went on the Saturday after this one was created, is actually from the week before. So the patrons, uh, the patrons get the the video and the file for the video uh, a week in advance. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, check out our Patreon. Again, appreciate you watching, and uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and think about becoming a patron. Thanks. See you in the next video.